Hey yo, you still coding like this? By now you should already know my opinion regarding the classic Arduino IDE. You take that Arduino IDE and you... How about something else with a bit more style, grace and usability? Briefly touched on in my last video, this video is about Platform IO, an extension inside the software Visual Studio Code, which supports a multitude of boards, not just Arduino. It runs ESPs, it runs STMs, and all sorts of other boards you could even think of. And this video will cover everything you need to know in the least amount of time possible. Now, compared to other videos regarding Platform I.O., I don't think you're stupid and I actually assume that you know how to install a program like Visual Studio Code. As soon as you've booted up Visual Studio Code for the first time, you can then head over to the Extensions tab and look for all sorts of neat little extensions, like the aforementioned Platform I.O. I, of course, already installed it. For you, it will have a little install button right here. As soon as that is done, you will see this little alien head here and that opens up the IDE platform IO within Visual Studio Code. You click that and head on over to open. You basically open the front page where you configure and build your projects. The first tab we're interested in is the home tab. Here you can basically start a new project, see some news, see what you've done in the past. You can see I've done a lot of things. For you, this might probably be empty. The second tab is for your projects. If you've done anything, then they will appear here. With the inspect tab, you can select a project and take a closer look at it. How much memory does it take up? What kind of framework is it built upon? And so on and so forth. Libraries is what you would actually use in the Arduino IDE with the same tab up on the top with libraries. Here you include stuff like the Adafruit JFX library for displays or you include the serial wire library for all sorts of different things. Clicking on boards will give you an overview of every kind of board that is available on platform IO. As you can see, there's a lot of them. The platforms tab will show you every kind of available platform for your board and your coding. Don't get boards and platforms confused. The platform is basically something like Atmel AVR, which is in turn used for all of the Arduino projects. Same for the Mega. You can guess where Espressive32 is going, that's for the ESPs. And down here we even got the ST, STM32. The last tab is Devices, which is a neat little overview that automatically detects whether you've got a board connected to your computer. It automatically opens up the serial port and looks, hey, where is this Arduino? And tries to find a good name for it and even shows you the COM port that you need. By the way, you can access the same options over here and have some additional little options we will get to in a minute. The first thing, of course, you'll want to do is open up a new project. You can name that any way you want. As always, I call my stuff test because that doesn't get confusing. Never. Then you select the board. In this case, we actually start with an Arduino Uno and choose the Arduino framework. Be careful. If you build this for the first time, it may take some time. And I mean it may take some time. When it's finished loading, you'll be greeted with your project on the left side called Like You Called It. It contains a few different folders and a few files and we'll first go over these folders before we go over anything else. The .pio folder is basically for any kind of libraries and binaries PIO itself needs to build your project. You don't usually configure anything in here manually. You do that with the PIO click and drag tools themselves. The next folder is .vs code which is basically another folder that you don't configure manually it stores all of the settings for vs code itself so your editor the include folder is for any kind of header file you'd want to include in your main file if you want to know more there's even a little readme file in here that tells you how to use this folder next folder is the lib folder it also contains a readme and this would be for your little sub modules that you would create for example, you could create a new folder that deals with an OLED display, your own implementation. You would create a little folder called OLED and in here you would put a little file called OLED.cpp for your source code. And to be able to access this from anywhere else in your project, you would add another little file that would be called OLED.h for the header file. The next folder is called source and this actually contains your classic old main.cpp that should look familiar. The only thing that's different is that we actually have to include the framework. This is because on platform IO you could have different frameworks apart from Arduino so it has to be specified at the top which one you actually want to use. The last folder test also contains a readme and is for test driven development. I won't go over this in this video, but this is a really, really interesting topic that you can check out in a future video. Next, we see a file called .gitignore. 
which basically, if you're familiar with Git, this is a file that tells the archiving system Git to ignore files that have these kind of shapes. For example, it tells you to ignore .pio because nothing of this will make any sense on a Git repository. If you don't know anything about Git, ignore this for now. It doesn't matter, just leave it there. And the last and probably most important file is platformio.ini. Yo, fellas. This is your configuration file in a code format. In here, you specify the environments which basically is the project around the platform you build for every kind of board you want to upload to. In this case, you can see it auto-generated for us an environment called Uno, because we wanted to use the Arduino Uno. It's on the platform Atmel AVR. It's a board Uno, of course, and it's a framework Arduino. And in here, you would include all sorts of other pre-built variables that configure how your project is treated. For example, if you'd want to set the monitor speed of your serial monitor for the UART terminal, you could do that by typing monitor speed and then equals an amount you actually want. Default it's set to 9600, but you can also bump it up a little more. I've included a full list of all of the possible commands you can put in this file in the description. You can now connect your board and even double check if it has been registered. For that, head on back to your platform IO tab and then we head to the aforementioned tab, Devices. And if you hit that, you can see on my PC, COM10 Arduino Uno. No. Nice. I have now prepared the classic old Blinky example because that shows how to get the deal done the easiest way. How do we upload this? Well, you can upload this by pressing this little button down here, which says Platform IO Upload. If you don't want to upload and want to compile first, then you can hit Build. Let's do that real quick. It opens up a terminal and then builds your project. You can see since it's a really small project, it doesn't take up much memory or it does not take much time to compile. We can now upload this thing and check if it works. And as you can see, it's blinking away like it's supposed to be. You now might notice additional little buttons down here, like a trash can and some kind of laboratory equipment and a little plug. Let's go over them real quick. The trash can is for cleaning. This basically uncompiles your project and removes any kind of pre-compiled libraries and binaries. The testing button is a part of the aforementioned test folder, which is part of test-driven development. And now, most importantly, the serial monitor. If you open up the serial monitor, it will then connect to your COM port at the specified speed you specified in your platform io.ini file and will try to read out the serial port. In this case, we don't print anything, so there's not anything there. So let's modify the sketch to actually print something. Now be sure to actually match the serial.begin speed with the thing you've specified in your platform io.ini, otherwise you'll get all sorts of funny squiggly lines down here. So let's re-upload. And if you re-upload while having the serial terminal open, it will automatically jump back to the serial terminal as soon as it's done flashing. See now it's coming up and it's printing some... Okay, that seems fine. But imagine yourself to be a kind of average Arduino fan versus average ESP32 enjoyer and you'd want to open a project with an ESP. Easily done. Back at the platform IO home, we can open up a new project, call it test ESP because you know how I am with my testing names. And then we're gonna look for the AZ delivery ESP32 because that's the one I currently own. Here, the same principle applies. You can see that your project has been opened up below the project from before and it has its own separate, completely equal folder structure. But this time the platform IO, which is conveniently open for us already, has different parameters in it. Now the environment is AZ Delivery DevKit V4 and it has a different platform and of course a different board. But the framework is the same, which means if we navigate to source and main, we see the same stuff. And we can even upload the same old Blinky sketch. Let's flash that project as well. And from the terminal, you can see that this one worked as well. Okay, that's also fine. But now let's say you actually hate your life and you want to program an ESP with the Espressive IDF, IoT Development Framework by Espressive. Easy, you could do that as well. Open up a new project, give it a name, test, ESP, IDF, select your board, AZ delivery, and then for framework, just use Espressive IoT Development Framework. Or even, let's say you are an absolute giga chat and you program on STM32. Well, easy, let's build an STM32 project. So test STM and let's even do it with the own abstraction layer and not even the Arduino framework. So we're gonna use the QPAL. Easily done, it's all here and there. You can start programming immediately. 
Additionally, if you're actually interested in debugging these devices, especially the Arduino, then you can check out my last video, which focuses on how you can debug an Arduino Nano or Uno completely without any additional hardware, no bullshit intended. Finally, a video about Platform IO wouldn't be complete without mentioning the great documentation they have. And additionally, even better than the documentation itself is the forum where tons of people like you are trying to program, find all sorts of problems, but then also find all sorts of solutions. Especially the moderators and the developers on this team are incredible. They actually respond, they are actually real people and you get an answer to your question, maybe even within 10 minutes. It's actually insane how much work these people put into this. It's great. So that's it for today. Ditch the old Arduino IDE and finally start coding like a real developer.